welcome to the Mariah Jean Fit YouTube channel. I'm Coach Mariah. Make sure you like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos as much as possible so we can reach a broader audience. We appreciate your support and enjoy the video. Next question you, <laughs> on this topic. It's funny, it's, it, and this is pretty much what bodybuilding is about is like figuring out what you know the requirements are of different federations but you know so that people aren't afraid going into bodybuilding because yeah. there is so much talk about this but do you try to avoid and of course you do because i know you um politics you know the yeah. whole favoritism politics you know we get along really well we have ever since we've you know met and, and yeah. spoken you can probably vouch and say that you don't favor anyone's girls it's yeah. not like you even know yeah like firstly yeah, most of the time we don't know. Like yeah. It's, it's too hard to keep How could you expect to them to track. care either? Yeah. yeah it's, it's too hard. Like I'm too busy doing other things to get the show ready to keep track of who's coaching who. Yeah, yeah. Like it just doesn't happen like Even that. with the name drops but, too, it's like it goes yeah. in one ear and goes out the other because yeah. you're not going to tie that competitor to me because yeah. there's so many of us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, and that system that I've got in place, if I was to do something dodgy, that system would also show that. Ah. Yeah. You know, so yep. you know, it holds everyone accountable, not just you know, including me. You know. Yeah. So yeah, you know, and that's why that's in place. You know, yeah. it's everyone's accountable to do the right thing. So because you know. I bought you lunch, I don't get favoritism now. No. Oh damn. Yeah, I thought yeah. that that ten dollar U foods would get me. <laughs> no. I'm joking. That's, that's not he's why like, you're going. He's like, you right are. now, I'm going to sanction you for doing that. <laughs> yeah. um, and I think that's one thing that we need to understand yeah. is that people have this facade. And um, I'm going to be honest too, yeah. not just with MBA, but like I'm not. I don't do people favors, and they don't do me favors. Like even yeah. with my experience with ICN, you know, I've had girls win overall titles there, and people have bitched about me as a coach, and they've said yeah. things like oh, you know, like she's, you know, Jason loves her. And it's like, I've had to fight for this shit. There's been years where I've had girls where I've gone, I thought they were going to win and they didn't, or I thought they were going to do well. And I was cranky. Like I was like, Woo, you know, yeah. fire burning inside me for a bit. And as coaches, you've got to settle down. Yeah. You've just got to realise that, you know, you just because you're mates with someone or your friends, you get along with them. No, they're not going to help you out. And, and and we don't expect that either. It's just that we almost, it's like we think that we've got everything right, everything's perfect, and some genetic freak rocks up on the day and just yeah. completely blasts one of our girls away. Yeah. So yeah. it's I think it's one of those sports, and I think Joey Cantlin handles this really well, that it is what it is. And it, sometimes it also is that we are all great coaches. Yeah. There's going to be a pool of us oh. that are you know, up there and doing a good job. And if anything, it's the, it is the competitors that decide. Yeah you know, where the placings are, yeah. so. So, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, there are some times that politics does happen, yeah. but I've put in place measures to stop it happening in our shows. Yeah. You know, I can't yeah. say it never happens and, you know. I think it's, it's less nowadays yeah, because I think people were getting called out yeah. for it previously. And yeah. you've still yeah. saw it in, in IFBB and yeah. WBFF, there was a little bit of like, can we sell this person? And, you know, are they marketable? Or do they have a lot of Instagram followers, all that type of stuff? And it's like, because there was uproar about it, yeah. It's less so now, yeah. but it, yeah. occasionally you see little glimpses of it. Yeah, and like I said, I, I go to other shows. It's very rare I sit there and go, what the just happened? Mm. Like, it, I do, mm. and you know, sometimes their criteria or how they judge is different to how I would judge, Yeah, but I can usually see what happened. Yep. It's rare I go to a show of any federation and just go, what the? So, yeah. you know, it... You know, 10 years ago, it probably was happening more than it is now, you know, but, yeah, I don't think it happens. Not as much, yeah. Yeah, so I wanted, I wanted to clear that up because it is, yeah. it's been a stigma in bodybuilding forever, you know, oh. are certain coaches in with other coaches? It's like, no, because you see this as well, that some coaches get pissed off, you yeah. know, some they'll have a tantrum mm, yeah. and or even competitors will have a tantrum um, yeah. and I've, you know, earlier on in my coaching days, I think I was more inclined to be a bit butt hurt and, you know, but or, or, and then you've got to really remove your own personal bias. Yeah. You just have but to. Imagine on a business level, mm. you know, X Federation gives this judge a favour, uh, this coach a favour, mm. 
now this coach is pissed off. <laughs> That's right. So next show we'll give them a favour, but now this coach is pissed off, so next show we'll give them a favour. It's yeah. going to be pretty obvious. Yeah, and, you know, and so. exactly. And it's not because if a coach keeps winning divisions, like, um, you know, I've seen in recent times, for example, um, T from Bodybuilding Dietitians, who I've just signed up with because she keeps winning figure divisions, yeah. and it's like there's a reason. She's yeah. good at what she does. Yeah. And if you want to bitch about her and if you want to knock about her behind her back, then it probably says more about you than it does about her and her competitors. Yeah. Um, but she's lovely. She's so, you know, composed, you know, um, and even Joey Cantlin, his successes and things like that with bodybuilding is he's a great coach. Yeah. He's a great coach. We must give each other credit where it's due and, yeah. and his competitors are a very high standard and he works with them for a prolonged period of time. Yeah. That's what's the most important thing is these people you see that are on stage that are, you know, killing it after, you know, you think I might have seen them before because they work with their coach, they stay yeah. with their coach and they're determined. Yeah, and you see coaches that have lots of clients doing well, mm. it's more likely it's because they're a good coach than yeah. that they're getting favours. Yeah. yeah, they don't. I, I, I've personally never seen anything suspicious yeah. and, you know, you'd think that as a coach that I would say that I have. Yeah. I, I haven't. I haven't seen – I've seen someone do very well one season and the next not at all. So yeah. it is uh, sometimes the luck of the draw and sometimes, you know, you, you do get lucky enough to have some, some really yeah. good competitors and, and, com and committed competitors yeah. as well. Um, so let's move along. What are your thoughts on, you know, get as lean as possible for female fitness or figure? Because I think we've already addressed this, but I want to know versus considering obviously proportion, sy symmetry and mass and the X shape, you know, yeah. instead of what is more important than the other – for your federation, like, do you trump one over the other or do you try and find that middle ground? We always look at the best total package. Yeah. You know, so just being the leanest on the stage in any given category mm. isn't what's going to win. Mm. It's not a conditioning comp. Mm. If it was, we'd turn up to registration with skinfold calipers or even a DEXA machine. Yeah, because they put the everyone just don't in know a what your body and we've just yeah. judged. You yeah. know, that'd be a whole lot easier. <laughs> so, yeah, if it was just a conditioning comp, mm. you know, cool, do that. Mm. You know, it's a bodybuilding comp. But you, you know. can see some people come in on DEXA scans or in bodies and they might, they might come yeah. in at, a, you know, 7% or whatever. Mm. And you got some that come in at 11 or 12 and beat yeah. them. Yeah, <laughs> because it's the best total right. package. Yep, yep, yep. You know, if you've got more muscle mm. and you know, slightly less condition, mm. you may still win because mm. your package overall looks better. Yeah. You know, it's also possible to be too lean. Yes. You know, especially in like the sports and fitness, mm. you know, a lot of girls in those categories think... Uh, just get as lean as possible. Mm. You don't have the musculature to get that lean yet. And unfortunately, you know? if you see a fitness or sports girl get that lean, they can actually look sick yeah. and too dry. Yeah, they look sick, they look drawn out, they look stringy, mm. you know, and it just doesn't look good. Mm. You know? It's almost taking bodybuilding backwards a step, I yeah. think. Um, and certainly I've seen it happen not just in your feds but other federations as well where... The girl's got fantastic conditioning and you think, well done on getting that lean, yeah. but she keeps getting second because, unfortunately, the girl next to her kept her muscularity and kept yeah. her fullness. Yeah. 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 So and leaner is not always better. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, so the next point, uh, can you explain... Oh, sorry, we've already gone through that one. We actually... It's funny. Some of the, the questions have led into other questions that I really wanted yeah. to answer. So that's it, yeah. good. It's good. Um so obviously with the eye walk, you know, you use the eye walk in your shows. That's one big point of difference as well. Can you explain a little bit about, I suppose, how that works? So because a lot of girls get really worried about it and they're like, yeah. oh, no, it's so different. It, it's actually really not that hard. No. Yeah, yeah. So how does that work? You know, because yeah. obviously so, people, they want to look stuff up. But yeah. if they're listening to this, they may as well figure it out. Yeah. So it's, it's your introduction to the stage. Mm -hmm. It's how you get introduced individually and you get your... 15 seconds of fame to nice. put a number on it. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's how you should look at it. Like, yeah. shouldn't be daunting. It's not, you know, it's not the be all and end all, but you get great photos, great time on stage for you, you know, on your own. Mm -hmm. Your family and friends get to cheer for you and you only. Mm -hmm. You know, it is that great first introduction to the stage. Yeah. So, you know, 
competitors walk out like you would be walking out on stage at any other show, mm. you do a pose, then you walk forward like you do in most other shows, do three poses, and then you walk to the line. Mm. Like, it's quite straightforward, really. Mm. Like, it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Mm. You know, as judges, it's our first chance to look at someone. Yep. So we want to see what your strengths are. We want you to hide your weaknesses. So you want you to hide your weaknesses from us. We want to see them. Mm. But, yeah, you know, so as a competitor, it's just show us your three best poses. Yeah, right. You know, so, so it's not it's, actually, it's not complicated. No. No. Yeah. And if anything, I think, too, it's just because people think it's different, they think it's going to be harder. Yeah. But when you learn it, you go, oh, okay, I've got yeah. nothing to worry about. Yeah. I think, too, is there's been some people who weren't aware there was an eye walk and have rocked up on the day and have just learned how to do it right there and then. Yeah. It's, and they're not talented people, you know. Yeah. They just go, oh, this is what I have to do. You've got great assistance on stage too. Yeah. Like there's a lot of people there helping out so yeah. that the, the show runs smoothly. I've rarely seen a doozy of a stuff up with a competitor where they've stuffed up and where you haven't been able to correct that yeah. as the person, as the MC speaking. Yeah. Um, I, it does go nicely. You know, no matter how brain foggy those competitors are, you make yeah. it work. Yeah, so. and yeah, yeah. Generally, if someone stuffs up on stage, the only people that know is them. Mm. Unless you go and tell the world and swear and go OF and drop your shoulders and walk <laughs> away funny. If you hold you know, hold your grace yeah. and just walk off like, oh, did that just happen? Yeah. No one's even going to notice. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, mistakes happen on stage. Well, that's right, that's because it. they don't get marked down for making a mistake. I've, yeah. I've slipped my shoe a couple of times. Um, mm. One of the one of the times, actually in your show, I weirdly combined two poses together yep. in a pose down. It worked, mm -hmm. but I didn't mm -hmm. do it on purpose. I actually mm -hmm. accidentally did it. You know, when you kind of yep. join two words together, yep. I was like, I'm going to do an abs and thighs, but I'm also going to do a front double bind. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, yeah. and it was in a pose down. I thought, no. just go with it. You, yeah. you absolute egg. <laughs> yeah. But the only person that knew you stuffed that up was you. The photographer yeah. got it and I was like, good job, mate. Yeah, good, good job. Shot. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just funny. Most people would just be like, yeah, that's very creative. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, you can play off like you would have as a dancer or a singer or anything, yeah. making a mistake. You can play anything off as long as you don't pay highlight to it. Yeah. And the judges don't give a shit, you know. Yeah. If you slip one shoe slightly or, you know, you kind of have to you know, fix up your shoulder a little bit, they're, yeah. they're not, they honestly don't, you know, oh, you know, just yep. mark down for that yeah. one. Like, yeah. you're human. you don't lose points for <laughs> things like that. That's a you myth. Know, overall, we're looking at the best physiques. Yep. So, yes, we're looking at your physique when you yep. walk out. Yeah. And how you present it is showing us your best of that. Yeah. But you're not getting marks for how your arms swing, you know, what fluff yeah. you add to it. They're not adding or losing marks. Yeah. They are, you know, the presentation factor is important. Yeah but it's not physically being marked. Correct, yeah. yeah. And that's one thing to note is like for, for you ladies out there that think that, you know, it's actually a, it's actually a personal pet peeve of mine mm. where if I do have my girls, and I don't even care what a federation, how they mark, mm. if my girls are, you know, doing these ones and flapping their yeah. arms around and, and just being a little bit like OTT, yeah. the reason why I don't like it is, yes, it's nice to stand out on the stage, but... Don't be egotistical and don't be a stage hog to the, to the extent of, look at me, I'm no. the only person here and I'm selfish yeah. because I think if you do that, it is distracting. Yeah. It doesn't look right. Why are you doing that? Why are you a windmill? You're yeah. a standing windmill and I, I can't... Yeah. That's my personal preference. Yeah. I'll never, ever allow one of my girls to behave like that on stage yeah. because I don't think it's graceful. No. Do you see the men's bodybuilding doing that? No. You know, you need to be able to carry that type of... Uh, theme across the federation yeah. so I like that I really do I like that you don't I think there is a difference between bringing energy and bringing cheerleading to yeah. a stage yeah yeah um so the next point uh can you sorry do do you hold the national shows as a combined state show if it's in the same state because uh, something that annoys the crap out of me is when I see that 
you know, some feds will have a state and national show. They're completely separate. It's the same fucking competitors, just slightly less of them. And they're having to pay two different registrations. And I've had to explain that to some of my girls before who've gone, why am I doing this again? Yeah. Why am I doing a double show? So yeah. can you explain? Yeah. So wherever we hold our nationals, mm -hmm. we don't do a state show in that state. So it's, it's yeah. combined? Yeah. yeah. So anyone from that state just automatically qualifies for the nationals. Okay. So we don't judge, you know, so this season A, our nationals is in Victoria. Mm -hmm. We don't judge the Victorians separately and go, you won first in Victoria, but you were third at nationals. Mm -hmm. You're just, you automatically qualify for the national show. Yeah, right. So, yep. yeah, you know, we, there's so many shows on now. <laughs> we, have a, we have a visitor, sorry guys. <laughs> Um, yeah, so yeah. There's, there's so many shows on now yeah. that, yeah, yeah, it's just... And it's so expensive, so, you know, making someone do a show in the same state to qualify, it's just too hard nowadays, you yeah. know, and finding weekends free to run competitions. Mm. Like, like I said, I talk to most of the other presidents, promoters, etc. You know, we do that, especially around times when we're setting up the calendars, mm. because we try not to clash. Mm. Sometimes venues just are only available and we end up with a clash. Yeah. But most of the time, no one wants that clash to happen. Yeah. So, you know, we do talk, we do try and not clash, mm. but that means over, you know, in Queensland especially, mm -hmm. over a six week period, every Saturday and Sunday, there's a show. Yeah. So yeah. if I was to try and do a qualifier and the state show, they might end up six weeks apart. Yeah. You know, or they might end up clashing with another show. And it's just, it's too hard on everyone. I think as well it gets to a point where it's like, this is a little bit too overwhelming for all of the competitors. And, yeah. and is, I, I sometimes as well, because uh, I found that WBFF doesn't... Um, sorry, guys, we've got a puppy in the middle of this podcast. This is the second podcast that you've, that you've um, jumped on into. Um, Sometimes, like okay. with WBFF, they won't actually talk to other federations about, you know, what uh, shows they've got on. So they've, they've got this overlap, and then it makes competitors, you know, have to decide, yeah. oh, am I going to do this show or am I going to do that, you know, that show? Yeah. Um, and I think that's not fair. I also think that, and I like that you do the combined national and state because you're not money grabbing. Yeah. Like, let's be honest. Yeah. You're not just doing a national and state show for the sake of doing it. You're doing it and going, look, you know, New South Wales, Victoria, you're welcome to fly up. Um, and Queensland, you automatically get into nationals. In, yeah. uh, and that makes a bigger show. Like, yeah. it's not, I've been to some national shows and they're tiny yeah. and they're underwhelming. And it's like, yes, it's the best of the best, but is it? Yeah. You know, because it is a repeat and there's people yeah. who were disheartened and didn't, you know, yeah. didn't do well at state, so then didn't go to nationals. And I think it's just, I actually really like the combined shows. So that's, yeah. that's good to know. So if you, you know, if you're competing in a season and NBA have a, um, a national show on, you can bet that, you know, in the, your state that yeah. that is also the state's show. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So the next point um, is, how do you go pro with NBA? What's the process involved with that? You yeah. know, you know what, like how, well, obviously there's a few different ways to go pro, but what, yeah. 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 So, so to win an NBA pro card, there's three different ways. Firstly, as an amateur competitor, you need to win the overall at the national show of mm -hmm. that season. Okay. So you're the best of the best of that season. Yeah. It's not, the first, second and third in the overall. Mm. It's not the open class winners. Mm -hmm. It's just the one person who oh, is so the best Oh, so you don't give it to best. open class winners. No. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's of course, so yes. Yeah. yeah, so it literally is the best of the best in that category for that season. That makes it much so, harder to win a pro card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, really. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, you know, the hardest, but it's also then the most rewarding, mm. you know. Because then so, you know you are the clear yeah. pro of that show. Yeah, like... To me, you know, and why we did it that way, I don't think winning a pro card for coming second really is going to feel that special. Mm. You know, it's still an achievement, don't get me wrong, you know, and there are some great pros out there who've done that. But, <laughs> you know, to, for that achievement, achievement level, being the best of the best is that achievement. Yeah, yeah. You know, so... Additionally to that, so we do also now, last year we introduced a master's pro card. Mm -hmm. So 
in the overall or the amateur overall if a masters competitor so anyone over 40 so we'll have an over 40s and over 50s category generally if the winner of either of those in the overall the judges believe is of pro standard then we offer them a masters pro card yeah so I, I think that's that's actually quite fair too yeah. because if you think about it there are people who have maybe retired from bodybuilding and come back to it or you know yeah. and they're kind of going how am i even going to get a chance to win when i'm going up against these 21 year olds yeah. you know it's like well it's not a fair playing field yeah. and i think bodybuilding in, in you know your 40s and 50s is bloody amazing as it yeah. on its own you know to be able to go back and do that after having a family etc and it should be its own playing field yeah. so that's that's a good yeah. thing to see so, there too yeah. yeah so there's that and then thirdly so in australia we we were the first federation to do an open pro show so our pro show is open to pros from any federation yeah any natural federation yeah so and if you place top three in that pro show you're then offered an NBA pro card as well. Oh, so, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's almost like if you go up against other pros and then, you know, you're in that, that, that the top of the, the crop kind of thing, yeah. it's you are pro worthy as well in our yeah. federation. Yeah. What, so, we, what happens if they get a fourth or fifth or sixth or whatever and it's like they have that feeling of, shit, maybe I'm not pro. Yeah. Um, do you encourage them to come back? Do you yeah. find they come back very often? Or yeah, no. Is there so, determination there? Yeah. La last season's pro show, Bikini, is actually a perfect example oh, of it that. Was, that was crazy. Yeah. Mia, who won yep. the year before, came dead last in our pro show. She yeah, was a pro yeah. with another federation. Yeah. She came dead last. She came back and she won it this year. You I, know? Yeah, and I so, think that's been really good with your yeah. your federations too, as I've seen people not do incredibly well with you but still come back. Yeah. Because you've said, look, this is what you need to do. This is the type of requirement. Yeah. Instead of going, no, you weren't good enough, go away, you know, yeah. or like, I don't mm -hmm. care about you and just get leaner. Yeah. It's like you've gone, look, I'm going to be honest, yeah. you know, you had these working points if you go away and do that, you actually will do better. Yeah. So that's fantastic. Do you believe a competitor can have the right or wrong genetics and natural structure to become a pro? Yeah, definitely. Like the reason there are so many different categories is the different genetic structures. Mm -hmm. So you don't have the genetic structure to do well in bikini. No. no. <laughs> I, well, my shoulders are too are actually naturally way too broad. Yeah. Even when I was quite thin and anorexic, yeah. it, it didn't actually look right. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, you know, in genetic structure, everyone will have the genetic structure for a category. Mm -hmm. You just might not be the category that you want to be in. So That's what, I, yeah. that's what I've noticed. I've noticed even with my own competitors and actually yeah. other competitors too where you think you'd be better in figure, yeah. you'd be better in, you know, fitness and they yeah. don't. They don't want to hear that. Yeah. So, yeah. And then there is the genetic factor of some people just struggle to get lean. Mm -hmm. Some people struggle to put on muscle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're either of those, mm. then you might not have the genetics for the sport. You might have really low set rib cage that makes your waist look massive. That's probably yeah. the biggest thing I've seen yeah. is that there are a lot of square shaped women, yeah. especially competing in, in, um, you know, bikini fitness sports and, yeah. you know, if anything, those are divisions that you need the small waist for. Yeah. And how do you tell a woman, hey, we've got to break your rib cage for you to be competitive? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, essentially that would be the case for some people. <laughs> you know, if mm. they want to do that specific category, mm. then yeah. But so. also too, you think about it like people go, oh, look, you know, selective bias. It's like, well, hold on, you're not being very good to the people who have got square waists and, you know, it's like, well, if you've got a square waist and you're a female, you must move up into figure. Yeah. Because yeah. that's the only thing you've really got a good chance of doing well in. Unless you yeah. can hide that waist, yeah. um, you shouldn't yeah. be ashamed of it. You know, do yeah. go into a sport that doesn't matter whether you've got a square yeah. waist. Basketball, you can't be short. Yeah. Like, yeah. you've got to think about this stuff. Yeah. Good, good to know because I think people do get a little bit iffy about that when they think they've got it all and then they might be missing that one, that yeah. X factor. And I've actually gotten a lot of hate in my time as a female bodybuilder because people go, oh, you're the prettiest on stage, that's why you won. And it's like, 
I actually have a small waist. I don't store body fat on my ribs. I'm mm. the first person to admit that. Yeah. And that I am I am lucky in that aspect because yeah. I that's my genetic favoritism. Yeah. But as you said, couldn't do bikini. Mm. I couldn't yeah. do wellness because I'm too long as yeah. well. So there's actually, there are categories that I don't fit into because yeah. of my genetics. Uh, and I think that's important. Clearly your genetics, but yeah. Um, stage lighting, I want to talk about your stage lighting. It's epic. Like, I didn't really realize that until photos came back from shows and I was like, there's a clear difference here. Yeah. Um, I like that there is shadow and lighting for the perfect balance because we know that, yeah, it's all good and well to have a lit up stage and, but it's such, it's just as important to have darkness and to have yeah. some shadowing to pick up muscle bellies because that's how we do it in photos as yeah. well, you know, when we are taking check-in photos. Um, do you have much of a hand in this and, and can you explain why you use your yep. lighting? Yep. So it's a combination of the best lighting to show the best physiques, mm -hmm. but we also set up lighting for the show aspect of the show as well. Yep. So, you know, there is the glitz and glam, you know, moving lights, etc., take changing colours, you know, we want the best of both worlds there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for a judging aspect, the lighting, you know, a, a blasted whitewash mm. does exactly that. It mm. whitewashes people out. Mm. Who wants to be whitewashed on stage? Yeah. You know, like that's not what we're trying to look at. So, you know, it does have to be set up right. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got no idea how to do it myself, so I pay professionals to do that. Mm. You know, people who are, but, you know, explain to them what we want and then get them to get it right. Yeah, because so, I found with some times I've seen lighting is that even with that dream tan as well for the figure yeah. and bodybuilders, we look like seals. Like we yeah. look like we've just been slimed in this mud and then a giant spotlight has been put on us and it's yeah. too shiny and it it almost with the sweat as well sometimes yeah. can we can look wet yeah. and then all of a sudden you can see reflection on muscles that shouldn't be on it and then you miss yeah. lines and it then kind of looks like the person is flat almost. Yeah. So that's often because people put too much dream tan dream on ten. as well. Big like, mistake. I've yeah. done it myself. I had too much yeah. dream tan on and I look like I'd rolled around in mud. Yeah. It was pretty much, there was an awful experience, yeah. but it is what it is. Yeah. You learn. And also the hot stuff spray too is like, yeah. use that sparingly because it burns, number yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Again, use the professionals. Yeah. Pay the, pay the tanner to tan you because yeah. they're tanning 100 people. They know how to tan. Yeah. Let the professionals do it. It's yeah. way easier. They get it right. Like, And also, too, a, if you know, like, you know, from your previous shows as well, like I, I've noticed that if I put Dream Tan on my legs, it makes them disappear. Yeah. You can't – I already struggle to get them to come in. Yeah. So it's like, well, if I put Dream Tan on them, then I've got nothing and yes. you just can't see any lines at all. So yeah. – I think that it is use things very sparingly and yeah. know that more is not always more with, yeah. with tan and hot stuff and yeah. oil and, you know, but all that type of yeah. stuff. On top of that is the lighting needs to be set up right. Like, the lighting, I think, I like yeah. your lighting because it gives a matte finish, yeah. which I actually believe in bodybuilding is required. Yeah. You need a matte finish so that you can see the difference between the muscle tissue without yeah. having reflection. Yeah. Because if you think about it, glossy, what are you going to see? Yeah. You're not going to see depth with gloss, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah, another big part of that, and that's why we do it, our stage banner's black. You know, yeah. You're standing yeah. against a black background. There's yeah. not flashing lights behind you. There's yeah. not changing colours. Mm. It's not super bright. You know, sure, that looks amazing from a show aspect, mm. but from a judging aspect, it actually takes away from the physique. So You see in the photos yeah. too, the stage photos, is that sometimes if the background was a bit blurry or a bit different, the competitor's physique is lost. Yeah. Um, you can't even focus on the competitor because yeah. it's too busy focusing on the background, yeah. which is... Yeah, so if a camera's doing that, a judge is doing that as well. Oh, yeah, your eyeball yeah. is going to be affected yeah. by the bright lights as well. Yeah. So, so And a whole day of it too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I would physically hate to judge a show with something like that. Well, even this ring light itself, yeah. like if you think about it, we've been here for almost two hours now, poor Stu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, those listening, thank you yeah. that you're still listening. Yeah. Um, but if you think about the ring light, like after a whole day of doing a vlog in front of a ring light, my eyes are just like, even now I'm seeing yeah. like specks and things like that. So... You know, if you have it on stage, imagine what it's doing to a physique or certainly the eyes yeah. of the judges. Yeah. I remember one show, we're talking 10-ish years ago, small RSL, not very well set up. Mm -hmm. 
two of the side lights died <gasps> first division of the show. And so essentially the middle three people was lit and nothing else. <laughs> yeah. The migraine I had after that show lasted three days. Jesus because Christ. Because the, the level of concentration and squinting and what you had to do because of poor lighting, you know, I never want to have to experience that myself. Mm. And as a competitor, you, know, you shouldn't have to experience something like that either. It's disappointing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's fair. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, so the next question, how high do you believe the standard is to be for Australian bodybuilding versus other countries like America, for example? Do you think we're heading in the right direction or are changes required to shift our chances at an international level? Is it a case of self-sabotage currently? Yeah. In the natural world, I think we're doing it pretty well. Like mm. You see Australians go over to different shows in the US with different federations and generally do pretty well. You know, it's not there. winning, it's placing quite well. Yeah. You know, maybe not so much in the untested world. You don't see Aussies doing quite as well. It's a big problem at the moment, you know. I think. But you know, mm. in our world, in the tested world, definitely I think we're yeah, you know, Australians are right up there, really competitive. I think certainly when you see an Australian competitor going overseas, um, even the quality and the standard of these natural competitors, I often look, even in the figure division, I'm seeing some of these figure competitors and I'm going, how did you get to an international show? Yeah. These other countries, you know, because I'm here I am looking at our competition going, it's fierce, we're lean, we've got heaps of muscle mass, like it's yeah. Even in Queensland, probably the most competitive state, we, we should agree yeah. with the figure, right? Yeah. Um, Victoria's getting there. Yeah. I think Victoria's starting to get some really nice natural figure ladies coming out. But they go overseas and they're up against these natty competitors and the natty competitors in other countries, I'm like, I'm disappointed. Yeah. You know, I look at their figure competitors and I'm like, why would you come in that soft, yeah. you know? it's. I think because, yeah, maybe the criteria really hasn't been properly explained over there yeah. or maybe... They're not dieting them as hard. I'm not quite yeah. sure, but whatever it is, it's um, not a bad thing for us, I suppose, yep. if we go overseas and compete internationally. Uh, as far as the untested federations, the perfect example is IFBB and Olympia. It's just still not connecting. Yep. You know, there's this real disconnect between marking in Australia, which I think they're working on fixing at the moment because yeah. it has been discussed. Yeah. Um, whether they can get it right in all facets and how long it's going to take or if it ever happens, yeah. I don't know. There, there's so many factors to why with that as well. You mm. know, you're talking the untested world. Mm. You're talking access to those things. Mm. You know, yeah. There's there's reasons why Americans look better. Because yeah. the PEDs, is every, they're everywhere. Yeah, yeah. the access yeah. to it, I suppose, is a big part of it and component. But um, I think another part of it too is that we're trying to almost set our own standard in Australia. Yeah. It's like, yeah. we're different. It's like, no, you can't be different. That's yeah. the whole point of competing internationally is you yeah. have to be, a, a, you know, on their level. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's interesting that you said that about those two different varieties and versions of, of bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, do you mark competitors down for not posing exactly a certain way? For example, a front pose slightly side on or, you know, maybe figure competitors, you know, they don't have their hands together or the fingers are slightly apart or it... I've seen this a bit here and there where it's like, oh, watch out, you won't get first because of this tiny little thing that, you know, no one gave a shit about but made you look better. Yeah. Um, what's, is that a thing? No, for us, so we've always said pose best for your physique. Yep. You know, every person is different, just show us your best. Yeah. You know, within the guidelines of the physical pose. Like if it's a front double bias, you've got to have both arms up, you've got to be showing us your biceps. Mm. You know, if it's a side chest, you've got to be showing us your side chest. Mm. You know, but you know, hip placement, leg placement, mm. those sort of things, it should be individualised because mm. No two people are exactly the same structurally. Yeah. So you're going to pose differently to show us your best. Yeah. So, you know, if you set 50 people up and make them all stand exactly the same way, mm. it's, you know, it's going to be advantageous to some, disadvantageous to others. Mm. And, yeah, it just, to me, that's just not fair. You yeah, know? yeah. So... And do you have a particular, you know, for example, like you go, okay, you know what, NBA only allowed this particular pose in front relaxed and um, I know obviously same question, but no. for figure, for example, I've seen some women who will go with another federation, they'll go only this position for front relaxed and so come to your federation, I've noticed with you that you don't do that. You're yeah. like, 
your front relaxed is has to be looking like in figure your front relaxed. Yeah. But it can be a slight variation of it that you believe that shows your physique off the best way possible. Yeah. And I actually like seeing that with figure yeah. competitors. You see them all pose slightly different. Yeah. You know, one girl might do a side try this way, and another one might have one leg staggered. And yeah. I like that because it gives them their own personal flair and change that, you know, is for them. Yeah. So, so you don't yeah. do that? You don't no. go, that's yeah. not allowed? No. Yeah. Like one, I couldn't be bothered. Like that's yeah. way too nitpicky and would waste so much time. Yeah. But two, it's not what's best for you no. as a competitor. Like, yeah. you know, show us how you look best. Mm -hmm. You know, pose the best way that you can hide your weaknesses, show us your strengths. Correct. You know, so if you can make your waist look smaller by some sort of optical illusion, do, do it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's like anything in life, really, with modelling yeah. and all sorts of stuff like that. There is there of the, that aspect of illusion created and given to things to yeah. people to show their best. Um, so, all right, the boys on the bodybuilding uh, down under podcast decided to ask you what the best uh, male bodybuilding competitor was that you would seen, you know, um, on your stage and your yeah. own shows. You know what? I don't know why, but it made me annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> it just, I got so, I love them. I think they're great. I th actually love their podcast. But I was like, what about women? What about yeah. the girls? What about equality? Um, yeah. Like, let's, you know, no bias either. Yeah. Let's talk about who you think is one of the best figure competitors you've seen on your stage. But not just that, in of all time, of all different yeah. federations. Yeah. In the natural world, all time, all different federations. Figure has changed a lot in yeah. the last 10, 15 years, so it's kind of hard to make that really call. make an all-time great call. Of like of what I've seen, Megan Groves at her absolute her peak. best peak was definitely up there as one of them. Mm. Um, not going to talk about present company, you know, just... Yeah, you know, so we don't look. Oh, biased that's lovely. Yeah, you know, so. But yeah. it, but it's but, funny because yeah. it, you know when we spoke about my physique and and I was a person who was very unknowing to yep. that. Like I didn't mm -hmm. know what I had yep. until I stood on stage next to people and I saw. And I'm not saying I'm the best. Yeah. I didn't realize until I was in a lineup and saw photos and I went, "That's me. Yeah. That's insane." Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't do that on purpose. Like yep. I haven't actually got to this point on purpose. Yeah. I am a, a genetic freak and yeah. I'm not a person that people should compare themselves to and go, I want to be just like Mariah in figure. Uh, it, I, it happened. And you yeah. spotted me from 2019 and went, yeah. she's got potential. She needs yeah. to keep going with the sport. Yeah. So thank you. That's yeah. lovely. Even though he didn't say it, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> Some yeah. small there's, amount. Yeah. Like, well, I went pro, I went pro yeah. into, into, and also... Um, yeah. Jordan, I would say that I saw last season, she did yep. the same thing I did in your federation, went pro yep. in two different divisions. Close, I think close, yep. but not not quite. There's a couple of things there that I think she could almost be the all-time, and I think yep. she will be in a few years' time. Yep. Yeah, Jordan's still quite young, so yeah. Yeah, no, there's definitely a lot of potential there. And the bodybuilding age is yep. young too. Yeah, yep. so yeah, cool. you know, there's there's lots of good ones out there with potential to, to overtake Mm -hmm. the previous ones that scares yeah. the shit out of me you know yep. that right <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> just like Gotta oh keep no <laughs> yeah. well and as you get older yep. too like you know you saw megan grove she peaked right yep. and as she gets older it's kind of like she'll move into those masters divisions and yep. i actually really like her demeanor as well i've had a lot of chats with her and she's so humble and i competed against her yep. um in a pro show for the first time ever we never had the opportunity to do that because every yep. previous show she was in a an open height or weight division that I wasn't in. I was yep. too tall, you know. Yeah. So it was nice to to be on stage um, next to her, and I did I did beat her at your show. But yep. I also think it was the the components of that was it was pretty fine between us and yep. and between me and um and and first as well. So yep. it, that was in, that was honestly one of the I think one of the most uh, competitive lineups I've ever I've ever had the pleasure of yeah. standing in. No, that was a great lineup yeah. to judge. It was definitely very tough. Yeah, so, there's some amazing yeah. competitors coming through. As, as you know, you've mentioned you've got yeah. some whispers in the in um, the works of things. So it is exciting to see, and yeah. I think it should only get better from here. Um, so I mean, outside of that, you know, next question because we could rattle on forever about the best mm -hmm. bodybuilders in the world mm -hmm. and and yeah. different federations. I mean, we could say, look, you know, even in the untested feds, there's 
there's quite a few there, but it changes from season to season too. And, yeah. you know, it's weird weird because in the male facet, we look at sebum, right, and yeah. go, we put sebum on a pedestal. But um, that leads me into my, my next question. Do you believe enhanced physiques um, at shows such as Olympia, you know, IFBB, are an unrealistic goal or expectation to place on young and avid natural bodybuilders who may not understand the risk of PED use? And that's yeah. male and female. Yeah. Do you no. think it's like that bar's yeah. a little bit too oh, high? Yeah, it's definitely... You know, what they do is great, no disrespect, but a young starting natural competitor mm. shouldn't be trying to look like what the IFBB pros look like. Because, yeah. Because, you know, it's just physically not possible. Place that you know, expectation on themselves. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Mm. There's a lot of help that goes into it. Mm. There's, you know, they've also, you know, to be placing at Olympia, they've probably been training for 10 plus years. Correct. So if you're someone who's just starting, mm. even without taking all those extra factors into account, they've got 10 years of training on you. Mm. Just, yeah. you know, compare yourself to other people with similar, mm. you know, training that's why days. there are novice divisions, first timers, et cetera. Correct. So that you do compare yourself against people of similar, you know, yeah. health. Stature and everything yeah. like that and the, all the height divisions and everything. I think this is something I've seen that's pretty toxic with male competitors in that there's young 17, 18-year-old fellas on the internet saying that they're jumping on cycle and, yeah. um, you know, even my experience, like, you know, when I started training at 19, 20, there was a lot of people using around me, but back then it was like... People, we, it's almost, it's weird. I think, I feel like we've gone the opposite direction. It's like yeah. back then we knew the risks of PED use. You know, everybody yeah. would talk about, hey, look, that's a bit dangerous. You know, that guy's juiced up to the eyeballs. Like, mm, I don't know whether yeah. that would be my personal decision. And it, this is not hating on PED use. Yeah. You know, from a standpoint of just because you can doesn't mean you should. And if you're a young man or a, or a young, or a woman at all, right? Because yeah. we don't want to really, you know, talk about that. Um, whether you, as a female, I personally think PED use, using uh you know exogenous hormones yeah. as in like testosterone and yeah. really heavy stuff that can screw around with their own hormonal profile yeah. i think it's dangerous you yeah. know men they bounce back you know yeah. they tend to bounce back a little bit more but um with with you know the, the younger the younger men and, and some women that i'm getting come to me it's heartbreaking because they are looking at olympia and they're going how long is it going to take me to look like that and i'm yeah. like <laughs> yeah. you know how many drugs are yeah. you willing to put into your body and do you understand that you could die? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And pretty much every one of those competitors up on the stage at Olympia started at a natural comp. Yes. Why would you start you know, the, way around, yeah. the other way around? Like it doesn't actually make, make sense. sense. Like yeah. learn all the things you need to learn doing, you know, three, four, five seasons of natural competing. Mm. You know, by all means, that... Like that you world's might its own step world, into that and, yep. and if that's what you want to do, great. Yeah. But build a foundation first. Yeah. You know, yeah. Get the most out of your body first. Yeah. You know, and then also then, think about your future yeah. too, and think you know because for those who want to have children, you know, if you want to think about your hair growth, like yeah. there are lots of factors to consider that some side effects with women are irreversible yep. um, and that's just the reality of it yeah. and people aren't talking about that enough so yep. it's not just about your bodybuilding career and I think we were talking about this the other day you know Alex and I were saying look the question is do you want to make a career out of this and are you willing to be um, transparent about it because yep. if it's career and you want to be an Olympia and this is your life and having kids isn't really your you know your jam and yeah you're not too, you've looked at the side effects and you're not too worried about them um, and you're willing to go that extra mile, no one's going to tell you to, to, to not do that. Um, but also the transparency is important. It's yeah. like, you know, don't be the first person to go and, as you said, do it before doing what you can do naturally. Think yeah. about it, consider all factors. And um, for me personally, it's something I will just never do. Yeah. Um, I'm stubborn yeah. and mm -hmm. I like to have that against my name of, this person has pushed as hard as possible and I'd rather die like that, you yeah. know? So, um, but it doesn't mean I wouldn't condone it for others. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, um, final few questions um, to finish up because we, we could drag this on for absolutely ever. ever, ever. Um, I think I had one I was going to, I was, I was skipped past and went back to another one, but um, what do you uh, think would you would like to improve for your federation or do differently 
in your own Fed um, and for shows for the future? Because, look, it'd be lovely to say I do rave on about NBA and I love you guys and, yeah. you know, even ICN as well. Like, they're, you know, I actually do like their shows, components of their shows. I think they've really made some big improvements in the last couple yeah. of years. They've got their shit together with some things. Um, you know, they've been obviously with the length of how long the shows can be sometimes. They yeah. were like, right, we've got to be on time. What would you like to improve? Like, yeah. let's be a little bit retrospective about it. Yeah. Overall, um, the biggest thing I want to improve is being in every state. So yeah. at the moment, we really are only on the East Coast. Mm. So, you know, we need to, to grow, ramp, it up. ramp that up. You know, that's yeah. the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, you know, on a show-by-show show perspective, um, I, we need to improve getting the word out there as mm. well. Like, definitely grow, grow interstate yep. first and then, yeah. At some stage, look at an international federation mm -hmm. um, to, to partner with. So, yeah, and that's going to yeah, be really hard because you've got such a high standard for your federation yeah. as well. Like, I think that's probably why you, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but haven't rushed that decision. Yeah, so, yeah, that's it. We You're waiting for yeah. the right guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah, and I think that's great. You know, as you, I think I heard another another podcast, become the best natural bodybuilding federation in Australia. And yeah. we say the best because it is absolutely up to the person competing yeah. as to who they prefer, et cetera, and all that type of stuff. Um, but, you know, have that as a goal. And you know, I yeah. think you're actually doing really well. I think the standards are on par, if not better, in some aspects, you know, and and that's just not, not just because I've won one of your shows, yeah. but... Yeah, my girls didn't do incredibly well the last season and I'm still going to smash them back into your shows again because yep. the criteria, the marking, uh, the the standard is, is still very high. So, um, yeah, and obviously that will hopefully happen with, you know, implementing a lot of um, word of mouth as well that we've yep. seen already for your federation and creating that culture, which does take time to establish. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Um, so what, where do you see NBA in five and 10 years respectively is the last question to, to answer, yeah. you know, along that line of things, where would you like to be obviously affiliated with an international federation, yeah. you know, or even establishing maybe a, a branch of or something like that. But yeah. what else have you got in the, in the midst? Um, that pretty much covers it. Yeah. You know, shows in every state. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, some sort of international affiliation. Yeah. Um, I don't see things changing too much as far as how those shows run or anything like that. Well, you set the standard time. from the start. So, yeah. 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 Obviously, you know, as trends in the sport change, we'll keep an eye on those. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, at this stage, I, I don't see too much changing from where we're at. Yeah. I think as well you've been making a few tweaks and changes. Like I know previously you had everyone doing an eye walk every time they were going out and the length of the shows because... I don't think you expected yeah. this. Yeah. You you were getting big lineups and, and yeah. shows at um sorry um numbers at, at shows and they were dragging out a little yeah. bit. So you know maybe that might be another aspect is like, yeah. you know how can we kind of condense it but still give a quality show so yeah. that we're not there until you know ten o'clock at night, which yeah. it is the case with a lot of other federations as well. It's like yeah. we can whinge about being there late, but it does happen. Yeah, because that's not a bad thing. It actually means that show was bigger than expected and yeah. was probably, you know, uh, one of the bigger of the of the shows. Yeah. Yeah. So, That's yeah. good. Good to good to hear. I like it. I will, I'll be supporting you for that time and I'm sure there'll be plenty of people who, as I said, if you experience the, the NBA show experience, you, you don't want to ever go, go back. Well, yeah. you do want to go back. You, yeah. you want to go forward with them, you know, yeah. um, and whoever else you want to you know, pair up with and yeah. um, compete with. So to finally finish, so you can go home to your yeah. lovely wife. Um, quick 10. Yeah. Well, actually, wife. Is it wife yet? Fiance. Fiance. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's okay. It's practically wife, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alex calls me his wife anyway. Yeah. He's like, oh, the wife. Same thing. Yeah, same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she can get her stepped in. Yeah. Um, quick 10. You ready? He hasn't yeah. seen these yet, so you, yeah. I'm going to hide them from you. Um, pizza or ice cream? Pizza. What? Mm. Stop it. We'll agree to disagree on that yeah. one. I'm, I've got a sweet tooth. <laughs> yeah. Pizza, what type of pizza? Uh, some sort of meat lovers, yeah. barbecue. Yep. Some sort of chilli. Triple cheese so. crust, double bacon cheeseburger pizza. Don't knock it. Mm. It's possibly a heart attack in a pizza. Yeah. If we're having a pizza, we're not caring <laughs> about. Right. Yeah, that's right. Not doing a homemade no, one. On, it's on not a, like a margarita or yeah. something like this. What it's even though that's a traditional pizza. Yeah. Let's be honest. Um, movies or beach? 
Um, movies. Yep. So is, would Alicia be on par with you on that one? Would she want to go to the movies? Uh, depends on the day. Yeah, right. Yeah. She's probably more beach. Alex and I yeah. are polar opposites too. Yeah. He's movies and I'm beach, but yeah. we always end up going to the beach. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so there you go. Um, all right, $10,000 now or $1 million in 10 years? Mm, I'll wait 10 years. Ah, okay. Yeah. Even though $1 million technically won't be worth as much in 10 years, yeah. inflation. It's all, right. it's all good. Keep doing what I'm doing. You wouldn't <laughs> invest the 10000 no. So you're conservative and you've also got a, a yeah. you've got that delayed gratification going on there. That's yeah. good. There you go. Um, will you ever shave your beard off? No. What if someone attacks you in your sleep and then just, what would you do? Probably find them and kill them. <laughs> <laughs> this man is protective of his beard. Yeah. Alicia likes the beard. Yeah. I did shave it, we're talking probably oh, six, seven years ago. Yeah. I, you don't, look this, you don't look like the same person no. with those photos of yeah. your, your body um, rolling. Yeah, I shaved it for a charity. All oh, right. And, yeah, Alicia said if I shaved it again, I'd be single. So, Jesus. You know, it's definitely It's a word of warning. Don't do it, yeah. Stu. Don't yeah. do it. <laughs> Far out. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. I actually prefer Alex with facial hair too. It's, yeah. I actually think it's a thing that comes with age with women as well. Like, I think when we mature, we like... I like Alex to have a beard, but I think when I was younger, maybe not, you know? Yep. So, yeah, there you go. All right, sorry, the beard's staying. Uh, Favourite childhood memory? Don't You're like, I hated I my childhood. <laughs> I didn't hate my childhood no, at I'm all, joking. but can't think of one off the top. Can't pick a single favourite. Let's say that. The things I think that we would probably yeah. not think of for most people, you know, you wouldn't be able to to put a, a finger on it, but maybe the things that didn't cost us any money yeah. would be those ones, yeah. 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 Um, but you had a good childhood, though, yes. obviously. Yes. I'm trying to get this childhood trauma out of you and it's just not there. <laughs> no, Sorry, guys, no juicy there. gossip. Yeah. <laughs> um, what career would you have if it wasn't in the in bodybuilding shows? What do you think you would have done? Um, well, I've had about 15 different careers already because I am that old. Well, but... then, other than all of those, <laughs> yeah. what was the dream um, that never really happened? The original dream at school was actually being a PE teacher. No way. Yeah. So that's but, very humble, isn't yeah. it? That's humble. Yeah. I, look, Done. you wouldn't be too far from being yeah. a PE teacher where you are mm -hmm. currently. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're all There's kind of children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the, you're making this jump through the loop, the hoops. Yeah. Um, that's funny. Really, a PE teacher. Yeah. I hated my PE teachers. Yeah. They were always really like really well groomed yeah. and really anal about everything as well. Yeah. But maybe that was just my experience. Yeah. Um, your pet peeve or pet hate of anything. Could How be chewing with your mouth How long open. Have you got? Oh Jesus, <laughs> he's petty. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is petty too. Yeah. He's so petty. Yeah. Um probably the biggest one is people not doing what they say they're gonna do. Yeah, not following yes. through. Yeah. As in procrastination, do you think? Or people promising you something and they're not, not doing yeah. it? So, that's yeah. annoying. Yeah. So basically just completely missing the mark altogether. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, last person you texted, I think I know who this would be. Alicia. Yeah, Alicia, yeah, yeah. yeah. Saying, hurry up. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd be the same. I'd be like, oh, yeah, i got to go. <laughs> yeah. It's good. She keeps you on the clock too because yes. otherwise you'd go off forever and yeah. do your own thing and see ya, yeah. bye. Oh, six o'clock shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, favourite saying? Don't have one. You don't have a favourite saying? No. Too oh, many good ones. I think mm. the ones that would be up there, I've heard one recently, which is altruism is the... Um, altru altruism is the answer to happiness or something like that. Yeah. You're caring for other people is what will bring you true happiness. Yeah. Um, you're not focusing on yourself all the time and being so stuck in your own shit. Yeah. And the That's other one on. was... Um, I'm just giving you answers mm. now. Yeah. Is... Um, uh, do the right thing even when no one's watching because that's I think one. that's pretty important. Yeah. And forgive yourself as quickly as you can. That's another, another yeah. favourite because I think a lot of the stuff aligns with bodybuilding too and yeah. when you use those, you can almost navigate the world a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Now you can use it for the next yeah. time someone asks you or yeah. just forget. That's You can do that too. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Monopoly or Scrabble to finish up. Monopoly or Scrabble. Monopoly. Damn it! Really? Yeah, I'm not so, good with too many big words. So I, know, <laughs> so I know that if I ever want to, you know, play a game of Monopoly or Scrabble, that I, I pull the Scrabble out because I'm really good at Scrabble. Yeah, no, I'm terrible. Monopoly. At Scrabble. But you're yeah. like, you can do the whole buying things yeah. and selling things, and 
Yeah. Yeah, cool. I wouldn't I honestly I lose every time. So yeah. we don't even own Monopoly for that reason. Yeah. yeah. All right, well thank you very much, Stu. It's been mm -hmm. an absolute pleasure. Cheers thank from you. Alien as well, by the Cheers. way. We're drinking mm -hmm. water, you know, mm -hmm. it's not really Cheers. It's just <laughs> protein shakes. We wish it was protein shakes. Um Thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Um, if you've got any questions at all, make sure that you message Stu or myself um, about NBA. Stu runs the Instagram page. Yep. Um, what's the handle for? Uh, NBA Australia mm -hmm. underscore official. NBA Australia underscore official. If you type in NBA Australia, it should come up. And yep. you guys are on Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok? Not yet. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. I'm on it, but I'm not actually on it. My VA yeah. runs it for me and I, yeah. I prefer it that way. So, yeah. yeah, unfortunately, us older folk don't like that yeah. type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but Instagram, Facebook, um, and posing classes, they're intermittent as well. Yeah. Depending on where you are. Yep. So um, make sure you reach out and, and uh, give this rather young but mm -hmm. advantageous federation a go. Yeah. Thanks yeah. a lot. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.